Hello, my name is Peter Chalmers and I'm a shoulder surgeon at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. And the purpose of this video is to show the surgical technique for what's called the Latarge procedure. This is a procedure that's done for a shoulder dislocation where there's also damage to the bone of the socket of the shoulder. Now the shoulder is a ball and socket joint and when the shoulder dislocates it can damage the front rim of the socket. If too much bone is lost off that rim, then the shoulder can keep dislocating because of that defect. Just like a golf ball sitting on a golf, broken golf tee will often fall off. In this procedure, the bone from the front of the shoulder called the coracoid is cut and then moved through a split in the front rotator cuff muscle called the subscapularis onto the front of the socket to build a new front rim of the socket and then fixed there with two screws. The patient is positioned in a seated position for this procedure. You can see the arm out to the side. We'll make our incision here that's about three to four inches long in the front of the shoulder. And um, this incision will provide us with plenty of exposure. It tends to be a still small incision and tends to heal with quite a cosmetic appearance and doesn't tend to cause a big scar. After dissecting through the subcutaneous tissues um, with electric cautery, this will allow us to make sure there's no bleeding so that we can have a clear surgical field so we can see what we're doing. We'll begin here dissecting between the deltoid muscle, which is on the right, and the pectoralis muscle that's on the left. And there's a big vein in this region that we'll dissect through to make sure that um, we can preserve that. Um, you can see here us dissecting between those two muscles and making sure, making sure we don't damage any muscles at all. We'll put in these retractors here so we can see exactly what we're doing during the surgery. And once these retractors are in, we'll be able to get a good look at what's called the coracoid, which is the bone that we're going to transfer onto the front of the socket. You can see there's a tendon that comes from the coracoid called the strap tendon, and we're dissecting here on the outside of that tendon, on the, the right side of the tendon. As we dissect up, there's a ligament connected to this bone called the coracoacromial ligament, and we're going to cut that ligament so that it's still attached to the coracoid so that we can use that ligament at the end of the procedure to rebuild the capsule of the shoulder. So you can see me here using a clamp to carefully cut that ligament while not damage the rotating, taking care not to damage the rotator cuff that's beneath where the clamp goes. So we're, we're going to work very carefully there, burning that ligament right off its attachment. And then we're going to work on the other side here of that tendon that comes off the coracoid. We have to be very careful here as all the nerves that go to the arm are immediately beneath where we're working. So you'll see me here carefully dissecting layer by layer. At this point, we have to cut another muscle that's attached to the inside of the coracoid called the pectoralis minor. And you'll see me here carefully dissecting the pectoralis minor here and then cutting it with our electric cautery to make sure we have full access to the coracoid. Now we're ready to cut the coracoid off to create what's called a coracoid osteotomy. We'll use a 90 degree bent saw blade to do that. You'll see us here creating that osteotomy while taking care to preserve and carefully protect all the nerves beneath. Once we make that osteotomy, you can see now the coracoid can move and then we can take it and flip it up and make sure that it's totally freed so that we'll be able to move it down to the front of the socket. The next thing we have to do here is carefully prepare the coracoid here and there's a lot of care taken here to make sure that we get a good preparation so that we'll be able to get that to heal to the front of the socket of the shoulder. So you can see me here carefully freeing up the coracoid so that it'll have full mobility to be able to move to where we need to transfer it to move to. We're careful here again as there are nerves underneath. Once we've gotten that coracoid to come all the way out, then we're going to move on to making sure that we have the back side of it prepared. We have, have to have bone-to-bone -bone healing for this procedure. So you'll see me here carefully using the saw to create a fresh healing surface on the back side of the coracoid as that's going to match with the front side of the socket. Once that's completed here now, we'll examine that edge. That edge has to be relatively straight as that's the edge that's going to match against the front of the socket. Here you'll see that we're drilling two holes. Later on, we'll put two screws through those holes um, and so we'll drill those now so that that's all prepared for our later transfer. Once that's complete, we'll be able to tuck the, pec the, uh, the graft underneath. You'll see me here using a ruler to measure exactly where those holes are, and then I'll prepare that ruler for later use so that I can measure um, on the socket to put the screws in exactly the right place to make sure the graft is perfectly lined up with the front edge of the socket here. This is a procedure where there's no room for error, so I'm very careful to make sure that the screws and the graft are perfectly placed on the socket. Here you can see us 
carefully determining exactly where to make our split in the front rotator cuff muscle, the subscapularis. We'll make our split in the muscular portion right here. And then to create a space in between the subscapularis muscle and the capsule of the shoulder, you're gonna see us push a ray tech through here and again to create that space. I've sped this up so you can see us creating that space, otherwise it takes too long to watch me push that whole ray tech in there. Once we get that sponge in place, we're gonna place our retractor so that we can see the capsule. This is a what's called a, um, a, a blunt retractor, so we can make sure we don't do any damage to that muscle. We'll place another retractor here so that we can see the capsule clearly. And once we can see that capsule, then we're ready to create our capsulotomy, which will give us access to the shoulder joint. You can see all of this is done very carefully to make sure we don't damage the nerves or any of the muscle um, of the shoulder. This is a muscle sparing approach, which is, I think, better for patients in their recovery. Here you see us cutting the capsule so we can access the shoulder joint and then placing a retractor so that we can see the front rim of the socket. Good exposure to the front rim of the socket is the challenging portion of this procedure, um, but getting good exposure here will allow us to make sure our graft is perfectly positioned. There you can see the front rim. Now we're gonna remove some soft tissue from the front rim so that we'll get bone-to-bone -bone healing. The bone-to-bone -bone healing in this procedure is a major benefit because it heals much more quickly than soft tissue. One of the things here that's really good here is once we get all that soft tissue off again with bone-to-bone -bone healing, that can occur in three months and allow for a much more quick return to play after this procedure. So we'll roughen that bone with a burr and make sure again that we have a fresh surface just like we did on the back side of the coracoid, again so that we get good apposition for healing here. You'll see us carefully doing that and then taking that bit of ruler I, I measured previously and measuring exactly where I want our drill hole to go. This will ensure that our per graft is perfectly positioned. So I've measured on the coracoid, now I'll measure on the front of the socket. And again, measuring in both places makes sure that we can be really, really precise with this procedure and make sure that it's perfect. We'll use this guide then to place a wire in this location. Once the wire is placed, we'll double check one more time. Do we love the wire? We'll use the ruler one more time, double, triple check, and then drill over the wire. And then we can place a wire through our graft and also through that hole, and that will bring the graft and the front edge of the socket together, and then we can place a screw over the wire to bring those two things together. So this technique, again, is very controlled and precise. You'll see me um, screwing double time here to get that down while making sure the graft is perfectly aligned with my finger as I go. Once that screw is in, then we can drill for a second screw above the first screw through, through the previously drilled hole in the coracoid taking sure to make sure our screws are perfectly aligned with the joint. Then we'll place, we'll measure for the top screw. This allows us to make sure the screw is the perfect, the perfect length and that we, we don't have a screw that's too long or too short. We'll place our top screw. And you'll notice that this screw is a solid screw. It doesn't have that hole in the middle for cannulation. That hole makes the screw weaker. Because of that, we're now going to remove the bottom screw to make sure there's no weakness at all on the screws. And then we don't have any risk that the screws might break if there's pressure that goes through the graft. So you'll see me here removing the bottom screw, removing the wire, and then placing a solid screw in its place on the bottom. So the benefit of this technique is it allows us to get the benefit of that drill and screw over a wire technique while also getting the benefit here of a solid screw that has the lowest risk for problems in the future with, with again, specific to the screw. So you'll see me here screwing in that bottom screw and then making sure both screws are perfectly tight so that I have great compression of the, the graft against the front of the socket. That compression and all that fresh healing service that I did will make sure that that graft has a really high chance for healing and that once it heals, that rebuilds the front edge to the socket. Here we're going to use that ligament that we cut earlier on the edge of the coracoid and repair that to the capsule. So this will now close back down the joint. So that cut that I made in the capsule, I'm now repairing back onto the front edge of the, um, of, of the ligament. Again, this is to provide even extra more stability to the shoulder. Um, so you'll see us get those two things aligned here, and then you'll see us um, tie that together with what's called a figure of eight stitch. So at this point, you can also see down below that tendon that's transferred with, with the uh, coracoid, and that tendon provides even more stability through what's called the sling effect, which also stabilizes the shoulder. So you can see that tendon coming in through the bottom right here in this final picture of our uh, reconstruction. And then what we'll do is we'll put in a little bit of antibiotic powder. This is what's called vancomycin powder to make sure that there's no opportunity for infection. 
and then we're done. And the nice thing about this procedure is you can see how the muscular layer completely closes and everything's encapsulated back inside. This is the benefit of not cutting any muscle. This is our completed repair, and you can see how that graft is perfectly aligned relative to the socket, and the two screws are perfectly parallel. Thanks so much for watching my video. Take care.